This is your boy Christ, checking in from the cross. And today, I'm gonna ask you a question. Who is Loki? Within the pantheon of Norse mythology, Loki, a god of chaos, is most certainly a main character. Even though, at times, he was not directly worshiped, but rather, the other gods were called on so that he would not influence their lives. While the Norse pantheon contains a wide variety of characters, two of the main groups of them are either the Aesirs, or the gods, and the Jotnar, or the giants. Now, unlike most of the giants and gods' relationships, where the father of the child was a god, Loki's father was instead a giant. Among the ranks of the gods of Asgard, Loki was adopted into their ranks by his surrogate father, Odin. Loki had a reputation for being a cunning and shape-shifting trickster, so much so that his story bears a strong resemblance from the Greek pantheon to Prometheus and Tantalus. What with his consistent causing of embarrassment and difficulty for the heavenly gods, he was even foretold to be the one who would bring about Ragnarok, or the end of the rule of the gods. Now, despite his many shortcomings, Loki was consistently the companion of both Odin and Thor in executing one of their clever schemes. Mary said, Mary said y'all was gonna fix my hair before you put me up here. Unlike many of the other gods from the Norse pantheon, such as Odin or Thor, Loki has very little symbolism that has survived to the present day. Some of the iconography surrounding Loki are the images such as the dual horned helmet or some associations with nets as well. Not only is Loki credited with creating the fishing net, but the Norse word Loki even translates to either knot or tangle. There are even those who say that this symbol is that of a snake or intertwined servants. Loki is well known for fathering various terrifying monsters. However, there is one story where Loki is a mother. Back in the early days of Valhalla, a craftsman came to visit the gods of Asgard. He offered to create for them a great citadel that would surround all of Asgard to protect them from all of their enemies. Not only that, he offered to do the whole thing in only three seasons. For payment of this feat, the request to not only receive the sun and moon, but to have the goddess Freya as his wife. The gods thought his price quite steep and haggled their way down to a deal that if the craftsman could complete the entire project by himself in a single season, that he would be paid in full all that he requested. The craftsman accepted this deal on the single condition that he could have his stallion with him to complete the work. The stallion was named Siarilferi. Loki convinced the other Asgardians that even with the help of a stallion, no man could finish the Citadel in a single season, and that surely they would come out on top, like me. And so, the craftsman began to set about his work on the first day of winter. For the most part, the work was done by the powerful will of the stallion. He hauled huge boulders and pulled many times its own weight, all seemingly without much effort. The building of the citadel progressed quite swiftly, taller and stronger than the gods of Asgard had imagined it could be. When there was about three days left until the end of the season, the worried Asgardians came together for a meeting. While discussing among themselves whose idea it was initially to hire a craftsman, the Asgardians came to the conclusion that it was Loki's decision and therefore he should bear the burden of solving the situation. That evening, while the craftsman was steady working on his project, a beautiful mare appeared from a nearby forest and neighed at the stallion to get its attention. The mare was in heat and the stallion broke away from its restraints and ran off after the mare into the woods. 
The craftsman tried to catch the two horses, but to no avail. In fact, he chased them for two days and nights and ended up not completing the citadel by the end of the season. In the end, the gods noticed just how wrathful that craftsman had been. And come to find out, he was actually a giant in disguise. Even more of a twist is that the mayor that led away that stallion was actually Loki. Loki eventually became pregnant and gave birth to the child as well. That child was Slipnir, the horse that would eventually become the steed of Father Odin. Even today, Loki remains elusive, ever-changing, and somewhat unfathomable. Quite honestly, no one really knows what Loki looks like due to his proficiency in shape-shifting. However, gods like Loki are not known for their appearance, but the character of their actions and the effects of them.